That is not a normal CPU. This is not a normal motherboard. And there are no RAM sticks in here at all. Yet the computer is on and working and running. How? So you're probably trying to figure out, even though you've probably read the video description already, what the heck this thing exactly is. So basically, I bought this off locally from another guy, nice guy by the way, for $450 for the, as you see here, except that when I got it, there was cables all over the place and I cleaned it up an awful lot. Basically, he took a Super Micro Xeon 5 7210 workstation and put it into a Corsair case here. And that's the way it came. Okay, so what we got here is a Super Micro K1 SPE motherboard. Now this motherboard is made specifically for the Knight's Landing generation of Xeon Phi CPUs. Yes, these are actually CPUs. They're not the adding cards that they have before that. This Water cooler, the AIO from Coolit Systems. This was actually an original part of that workstation, but he switched it over into this case because he said he didn't like the server power supply that it really came with, and it was too noisy. So he went for a more quiet option. No big deal. But this original system was used as a workstation, as a development workstation, so people could fine-tune their programs before running it on this very unique CPU in a multi-cluster supercomputer style. You would find thousands of these chips in a supercomputer easily. Well, this chip, the Xeon 5 7210, is a 64-core, yes, 64 cores, 256 threads. This is basically a CPU with an identity crisis that wants to act like a GPU. Tons of low speed cores doing a lot of computational data and analysis. So basically it has 64 Silvermont generation Atom, Intel Atom cores. But instead of having one thread or two threads, they've upped it to four threads per core. And that's why we have the CPU. So this one runs Base speed, only 1.3 gigahertz. Full turbo on like a few cores, 1.5. If you load all the cores down, you get 1.4 gigahertz out of it. But it makes up for it in the sheer volume of cores that it has. That's what it's made for. So, no, you would not game on this. It would suck. So on the motherboard that it comes with, this actually has 10 SATA ports. Two of which, as you see in yellow here, are SATA DOM ports. Two X16 slots, which I believe they are actually X16, electrically. Then there is an X8 port down here that is only X4 electrically. There's also a lattice little FPGA, which I've never figured out how to use yet. It does have an IPMI interface. So this is a full server setup. So I'm sure you're wondering how the heck this thing is running and working without any RAM installed. Well, that's not entirely true. True, there are no RAM sticks installed, but on the CPU itself, it has 16 gigabytes of really high speed RAM built onto it. Not on die, but it is on the substrate. Sort of like how the uh, AMD cards had the HBM or HBM2 memory. This is the competitor of that RAM to it, and it's actually built right onto it. So if you set it up correctly in the BIOS, it will run directly off that 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the reason I actually bought this was I thought it was a unique enough CPU that mimicked the GPU, but it's still a CPU. So now that I've got my GPU farms going, I'm getting more into the CPU mining, sort of like how Rabbit Mining is, but I want to take a different approach to it. Instead of just using a Ryzen, let's find something unique. So. Let's go over to the computer and see what I can do with this in CPU mining. So we're going to start on the HiveOS worker page. You see here, yes, it's named Xeon Phi. Go figure. And I'm using the Hellminer Miner program. Now that is specific only to Luckpool. 
It doesn't work on any other pools, but at the same time, there's no dev fee. And it's also about 10% faster than the other available Varus coin mining program, which is like NHEQ Miner or something like that, um, which works on multiple pools, but that has a dev fee as well. So this seems to be the best setup that I can find. Of course, there is no GPU installed in this system. The only one it picks up is the one from the IPMI um, management system that's built onto the motherboard. And it's yellow, it's disabled, we can't use it. Not that it would actually do anything to begin with. It's literally just 800 by 600 VGA output for remote access. That's all it's for. Now, the weird thing is when you use Hellminer, after about 15 minutes or so, all the threads disappear and all the information disappears. For some reason, it like stops reporting to Hive OS, but it's still running in the background. And there's two ways I can easily see that. One is right down here is for your load average. Remember, this is a 256 thread CPU. And you can see right now we're using almost 255. So it's definitely still running. CPU temperature is running. I think at idle it runs around 28 degrees or something like that, maybe 30 degrees. So it's definitely pulling some wattage. Never pay attention to this. Um, so if we look at the flight sheet, it's a very simple flight sheet. It's just my Varus address, the luck pool server information, uh, the hell miner miner, as you can see, it's just for CPU. All the rest of the information here is stock, except for this one right here, the double dash CPU equals 252. Now for this CPU, if I put it all the way to 256 threads, it does put the load average into the red because you have a little bit of an overhead just for the Hive OS operating system itself. So it's good to back it off just a little bit. And 252 seems to be the sweet spot because it's putting us just below 256, which is perfect. It gets the most amount of work done from the CPU without it bottlenecking at all. Now, if we go over to Luck Pool, you see right down here, Xeon Phi. Gaming PC is the PC I'm recording on right now, so yeah, it's off. But if we click on the information on here and scroll down just a little bit, you can see we're averaging around now the, anywhere between 40 and 43 mega hash, depending upon how the algorithm's going and everything. But 43, 41, 43 mega hash at 250 watts, that's Threadripper 1950 territory. And this thing's a lot older. And it only does it at 250 watts, which is about comparable for what um, a Threadripper 9, 1950 would pull. But it's a very unique architecture, and that's why I want to play with this. And this is the other way, also, I can see that it's still working, that it's still hashing. I'm still getting shares in, so no big deal. It's some stupid little bug in here that it won't show the information up. Worst comes to worst, I can always do a restart of the miner, which I will do now, actually. This way I can show you what it looks like before it just goes blank. <laughs> and there, now you can see it right on over there. Um, 250, well, 252 threads. Um, the red ERR error, that is just for the reason why I can't see the CPU cooling fan speed. Big deal. No, it doesn't affect the performance of it at all. See, 240 up to 251, because remember, the first one is zero. So yeah, zero to 251, 252 threads on a single CPU. That's insane. Um, just also as another verification down here, motherboard, K1 SPE Super Micro. And CPU, 256 threads, Intel registered Xeon Phi trademark CPU, 7210 at 1.3 gigahertz. Now, when this is actually running like this, um, base is 1.3. Right now, they're running at 1.4 gigahertz, full load. And I also wanted to show you two die shots real quick of this CPU to show how the architecture is vastly different than what you normally find in a computer. Now, first one is a regular four core Intel CPU. You got four cores, the cache for it, PCIe. Actually, wait, is that even Intel? 
but there's no onboard video. This might be like an older Ryzen or something like that. But this is the basic architecture. You usually see like four cores type of deal, maybe two threads on each core. Now, if you go over to the 7210, now this is a 72 core variant, but it's basically the same. Look at all, each one of these is a core, and this is all one die. Now remember, each core has four threads. So you can see how this mimics more of a GPU architecture than a CPU architecture. And that's why I find it pretty cool and it's definitely unique and it works really well on Varus. I've tried this on XMR, Monero, and Scala, which is sort of a derivative of XMR and that's XLA. It doesn't work really good. I only get maybe like 5,500 hashes a second out of it versus like a, 30, uh, a Ryzen 3900. You can get 15,000 out of that thing. And it's not even the latest and greatest. The problem is the XMR or the random X algorithm relies heavily on random access to L3 cache. This chip does not have L3 cache. It has L1, it has a very big L2, but RandomX doesn't use that. It uses L3 cache, so that's why the performance on it is very slow. So this CPU is almost coveted by the various mining community, and this is why. So if you made it all the way through the video, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, please, if you liked the video. Share this around the mining community. Any additional information will be down in the video description below. And there will also be a link for the Mining Misfits Discord, where you can find like-minded miners, just like myself and everyone else that's in there, that you can just chat with, or if you need more help, I can help you, or there's tons of other people in there that can also help you. I will see you next time.